Hi world and welcome back to the Bonita Show where we have a panel set up here of some awesome filmmakers from the local area. We have Pirate Pictures and Corner Film Productions and they're going to tell us some good things about um, filmmaking and budgeting and all that good stuff. So Pirate Pictures and Corner Film Productions, welcome back again to Thank the Bonita you. Show. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. And, Thank you. and share with us your knowledge on um, film production. Let's start with, here we go. Uh, so I know dirty. Like, oh, God, you're dirty. Respectfully. Oh, dear Lord. Lord. Um, Red shirt. Yeah. Um, no, no, I mean, we don't talk about it. Yeah. Uh, um, there's, a, there's an old saying, and mm -hmm. it, it applies to just about any business or just about anything you're ever going to do. That old saying of good, fast, or cheap, pick two. You can make it good and, and you can make it fast, but it's not going to be cheap. You can make it cheap and you can make it good, but it's not going to be fast. That's a good okay. thing for, for anyone to learn right out the gate because um, I've seen people make some amazing films doing it on weekends mm -hmm. over the course of a year or two. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a filmmaker here in town, Chris Grega, who made a World War II epic. He shot it over the course of three years. I won't tell you what he spent because I think it's a secret, but he spent a very small amount of money and made a very authentic World War II epic, but it took him time. So if, if you need to really marshal your resources and you need a helicopter and you need a stunt and you need an explosion and you need it all right now and you want it at this place at this time, you're going to have to pay for it. All right. Yeah. But if you've got time and you can schedule all these elements and you can use these things and you can be flexible, then you can do it uh, a little more cheaply. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the other big thing I'm going to say right out the gate is with any sort of production that you're doing, something that's been said to Gail and I over and over and over at Pirate by professionals is the phrase, manage your expectations. Mm -hmm. Because everyone goes into this thinking, I'm going to make the best independent film ever, I'm going to get it out there, it's going to get theatrical release, it's going to be successful, I'm going to make a ton of money. Well, probably not. Yeah. And I think if you go into things realistically, you go into things practically, then you have a better sense of uh, how to treat it, how to handle it, and you won't be disappointed. You really, it takes a while to assess what you're doing and judge it realistically. Nobody wants to look at their project and say, well, this project's only worth this much, mm -hmm. and it's only going to be this successful. It takes you a long time to get to that point. I've, I've gotten to the point with projects where I look at them and go, I'm done with this. I've spent too much time and energy on this. It doesn't need to, I can't spend any more money on this. It's done. And it's hard to balance like the creative with the pragmatic. But these things, you know, it is show business. You have to learn how to put the art together with the business. Yep. It's, it's not evil to learn about business and be about business. It's, it's a good thing to meld these two things together. Because right. if we so, want to keep doing the creative, we yes. have to know how to run the business. Yeah. There's a lot of filmmakers just want to be creative and play and don't worry about the stuff that happens mm -hmm. afterwards but it's, it is helpful to know about the stuff that happens after gotta be smart mm -hmm. yeah now um i know corner film you guys mentioned in, during your interview that you you you, you had this big uh it, it kept yeah, growing yeah. your project kept growing <laughs> yeah and so how did you bring it back into perspective? Or did it ever come back well, into perspective? Uh, with, with the script and locations, no. But, <laughs> but, but yeah. we ended up with some fantastic locations. Uh -huh. and, fantastic. We, and we got um, just about all of them for free because yeah. it's networks. <coughs> yeah. It's yeah. who you know. And, and for better or for worse, film is about who you know. Yeah. And if you have connections, whether it's in St. Louis or L.A. or yeah. in Europe, depending on where you are, it doesn't yeah. matter. As long as you know people who are willing to do it and are willing to lend you resources mm -hmm. and time and effort and even money, you're good. That's good. And, and that is such a huge help for any mm -hmm. production. And that was what saved us because mm -hmm. if the movie, if we ended up paying for every location, mm -hmm. the movie, the budget would have ballooned to an unimaginable height. But yeah. this yeah. was a lot, it was really a very much an effort by the local community. And they came out and they, were willing to, to let us shoot there for mm -hmm. long periods of time without having to worry about pay, and that was such a huge yeah. help to us. There was some gaps, I'm sorry, there were some gaps where we didn't know, and we had to reach out and ask very politely, very humbly, but genuinely, okay. and remain confident. And I, that's, my, that's what I would impart upon this conversation, is mm -hmm. remain confident, but also be very humble, um, not only with locations, but with your, your expectations, and just how you work with people, because, mm -hmm. you know, working with you're going to run into people who are more experienced than you. Yeah. Respect that. 
and, and don't ask too much of them. <laughs> you know, yeah. You're going to run into people who need your help, who are less experienced. Then help them because they might help you later on. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. humble and confidence. I, that's exactly the point that I was going to make. That it's not it's it is the networking and it's who you know, but it's also how you treat the people yeah. because yeah. you might need help from somebody, but then like you said, if if you help somebody else, then they may turn around and help you. Everything and will so, balance out equally. Yeah, yeah. and, and don't long-term. set your heart on something that's, you know, I have to either you know get this particular person to be in the movie, or I have to film at this particular location mm-hmm. because yeah. you're gonna run into problems. We, we ran into one problem where we wanted a location and up in the air had shot there and they got paid. And so they told us, well you can shoot here. You know, oh, yeah. we, we know you don't have the budget, but you can shoot here, but we get to see your entire script and after it's shot we get veto power over the scene and we said no. And we, so we picked another location okay. and it was, wow. it was wonderful because, because had we shot there they could have cut that scene, you would have, and yeah, we would have had to reshoot it anyway. It would have been a compromise. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing you can't do. It just may not be exactly that first place that you want to do it at, or. But the end viewer doesn't know that exactly. Right. You know? You'd never. Yeah, you would never know that. Mm-hmm. Oh well, they didn't get where they wanted, and they. Yeah, and if it still else. tells the story, yeah. then mm-hmm. yeah, because we ended up having to do that. We. One of the scenes in Shadowland was a, a burned out church. Mm-hmm. And there's this burned out church down mm-hmm. by St. Louis University that's literally yeah, the husk of a church. About, yeah. And that's where we wanted to shoot. Why it wrote the script with that particular location in mind. But because of, at the time, the liability of it, it was very unstable. They wouldn't let us near it. So we went on a quest for finding a church that would let us shoot. So it's not stabilized. Yeah, it has. Yeah. I drove by it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell the world the difference between a, a low budget and a, a big budget. Because I know Shadowland, when, when, when I heard that it was a low budget film and I heard the cost, I was like, oh. It doesn't sound too low budget to me. Is it okay to talk about that? Yeah, no, it's okay. okay. It's okay now. Since we've become our own distributors. Okay. Um, uh, Shadowland was about a $300,000 film, mm-hmm. which in the realm of a lot of low-budget filmmakers sounds like a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not. Not when you start talking about the logistics and not when, when, not when you start actually paying people. Right. But generally speaking, a lot of low-budget films operate in about the $1 to $2 million area, and a lot of that has to do with the idea of SAG, the union mm-hmm. actors. Mm-hmm. And uh, once you start crossing over about the 800000 to $1.2 million mark, that's when you really start to get the notice of the unions and that's when you really start getting some pressures and it's actually it's actually to your benefit at that point to start working with the unions and taking on union actors but there's also a, a, an interesting teeter-totter here the more money you start spending the more you're going to need to attract uh, attention in the right. advertising mm-hmm. one of the biggest things I wish we could change on Shadowland is I wish we had cast some kind of a name actor mm-hmm. even in a supporting role because I think our sales would have been better mm-hmm. and these are one of these things you balance the creative yep, with yep, the marketing yep, yep. but you know 300 grand you can get away with not having names you start getting closer to the 1 million or the 2 mm-hmm. million dollar mm-hmm. mark mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to sell a film two million dollars worth without a name attached okay. especially when you start going overseas mm-hmm. overseas you get into a multi-million dollar film they want to know who is in it mm-hmm. and they're probably not even going to buy it based on the movie they're going to buy it based on the artwork and the names attached mm-hmm. so you know um so one to two million dollars i think would qualify as the low budget and the ultra low budget arena but then you have to start putting it in perspective like studio average studio productions now <laughs> Are running probably eighty to ninety million dollars. Yeah, and then for the big budget ones, you're talking one fifty million to two hundred million yeah. more. Okay. So, so the f- term that we're missing here is ultra low yeah. budget. Right. Right. Micro, right. Budget. Right. Micro, budget. micro budget. Yeah. yeah. I think five, ten, twenty million dollars financed and shot locally. Well, up in the air, I heard I've heard estimates of about twenty to twenty five million dollars on up in the air. That's a that's one of the biggest films that's come through here in a long time. So yeah. that's a significant film. $25 million on Up in the Air was actually a very small oh, studio yeah. film. Yeah, so it, it all is on a sliding scale. And then you get into independent. What is independent? If you're talking about financing separate from the studio mm-hmm. system, even a film like Terminator 2 was an independent film. But that was an $80 million film. So independent gets yeah. very odd and hard mm-hmm. to define, too. The, the Weinsteins are technically independent filmmakers, but they have their own studio, and they make big budget films. So mm-hmm. it, gets very, it gets very gray. One of the things I like about independent locally is it usually is a very small 
core creative team. Like with, with Pirate Pictures, there's literally three people, and that's the command chain. So if we have a decision to make, there's those three people. I would imagine with Corner Films, yeah, it's, like it's four, you guys. Yeah, well, there's four, four of people. us, so yeah. Alex Shirley, and that's, yeah, same, same kind of thing. Big studio projects that I've worked on, I gotta ask a guy. He's gotta ask a guy. He's gotta ask a guy. It's gotta yeah. go up to the office. Yeah, it's gotta go through the yeah. chain. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've worked overseas. I've worked with the Japanese, and oh my God, sometimes it takes ten or twelve days to get an answer because it's gotta go all the way up through the Japanese chain of command and then come back all the way down. Yeah. And then you gotta worry about whether or not you insulted people. And you, get, <laughs> you get into honor, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that was military. That's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that it was Gail and Bob and I on set every day and an emergency could come up and we could solve it right then right, and there just, and literally, literally you you change your hats right yeah, there on the yeah, fly and yeah. just do it and boom you're back yeah, to work. exactly yeah, the, same the same way with us yeah. it's it, and you don't have to worry about answering to a it's higher authority because you are technically that authority, authority. Yeah. yeah right yeah. and we've, we've split our time too if we have one scene that we need to film and the other scene needs to practice you know we can split our time up a bit there yeah. being four of us and we all know what's going on that helps too it's good that you guys trust each other and can yeah. do that it's a huge yeah. component of our operation yeah. the trust uh, and, and we all earn that trust with each other and just that's how it runs and it, that's how you you know and we have we have other people that we work with that we have associates and we trust them and you know it's just that how it works trust yeah. is very important yeah. this you guys have brought so much good information here. Final words of wisdom. Um, get the right people for the right job. Even oh, on the yes. low end, yeah. um, people tend to edit, sound mix, shoot, act in, do the graphic arts for, and try to do everything on their own film. If you're not a good graphic artist, get somebody else to do Delegate. it. Yeah. If, yeah. If Delegate. If you're not, if you're a great actor and a great director, but you're not a great cameraman, get somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. Get good, surround yourself with the best people, let them do what they do. Yeah. That works at the studio level, it works on the indie level too. And that's great, yeah, and, and don't be afraid to do it. Even if you don't think you have the, the budget or the resources, do it. Because there's no way you're going to know and there's no way you're going to ever achieve it unless you actually try it. And people will, if the project is good and the talent is good, people will come to you and they'll want to work with you. Wow. And it, it will ultimately be... We've said it before about you guys, actually, that we're really impressed that you are doing this. That, and you keep doing it. And that you're, you know, there's so many filmmakers that just talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to yep. make a film someday. Yep. But yep. Yep. that you guys are out there yep. doing it. And we're able awesome. to do it with, because of people like you yeah. who were able to yeah. support yeah. us and, and, and continue, continue to support. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rental. You guys are nuts. <laughs> she was on a boat and on a helicopter driving and then on a plane and then in London on a train all in the course of about yeah. two days. I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming. You guys are coming back, right? You yeah, 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 definitely. Say goodbye to the world. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. <laughs> Bye, world.